Well, hey, how you doing today? I heard that you came here because you want to know how to hook up your MacBook Air with the M1 processor to dual monitors. I'm going to show you an easy step-by-step -step guide and tell you what you need right now. Let's get started. Okay, the first device that you're going to need to hook up your MacBook Air with the M1 processor is a USB dongle. Uh, of course, I got a lot of cables going on here, but this is the USB dongle that I purchased. Now, this is a, eh, let's see if we can see the name of it here, ROHS. And I'll have the link for all these in the uh, description below. So you can use, please use my Amazon links to support the channel. And this is made by Linton. L-E-N-T-I-O-N. Linton. Linton? Close enough. You get the idea. But the link will be in the description below. This is from Amazon. The second thing you're going to need is a display link. Uh, this is a display link docking station. And it's very nice because it has a couple USB ports in the front. It does have a, a headphone jack here, an audio jack, if you should need that. On the back of it, outside a little bit of dust here, you know, normal desk, right? A little, it wouldn't be a desk if it wasn't dust, that's for sure. So anyway, on the back of it here, you can see it is powered, so you need power on it. This is actually the USB plug that goes over into the dongle right here. This is a DVI to VGA connector. Okay, so if you have a DVI monitor, you're good. You're straight up, you're okay. You could just do it with that. Also on the back of this thing, there's an HDMI plug. Okay, so here's the first monitor right there. I'm trying to keep this turned around here. And here's the second monitor, the DVI. Okay, very nice. You can also plug Ethernet in here. If you want Ethernet to go into your MacBook Air, by all means, you can do that and get a higher uh, speed connection rate. And we also have four USB 3.0 ports on the back of this thing. Now, what I can tell you nice about this dongle here is the plug that I have that going into, if you can see the blue, it is a USB 3 port, okay? So that does make a difference. And again, forgive me for some of these camera angles here. Trying to handhold the camera. I know, I know, I know. You're saying, Jack, it's not too professional. Well, it's going to be as good as it is, okay? So it does plug into the USB 3 side there. And this is obviously the, US, the USB-C connection that goes into the side right here of the MacBook Air. All right? Now, little pro tip. When you're using this and you want to use it in the closed mode, all you have to do is make sure you have the power cable plugged into your laptop. So we're going to plug the power cable in, plug the USB-C in here, and we're going to get these dual screens up and running. Okay, and then I'll show you some settings around on the computer to help you get it more organized so it'll be good for you to go. And I'll also tell you a couple pro tricks that I found that's going to help you along. So let's go ahead and get started here, get this connected up, and at that point, I'll take you to the dual screens. All right, guys. So I wanted to show you here very simply with the camera. Uh, hopefully this is going to pick up okay. That These are the dual screens I have right now on my M1 MacBook Air. <coughs> if you see, I'm actually editing this video currently on this left monitor. Uh, so I thought I would record this video real quick here just to show you that this does work uh, very well. So here is uh, Google Chrome on this side, obviously with my... Uh, Jack's Tech Corner, or 42 Techno Man up here on the screen, okay? So it's very responsive, everything works very well, just like you would think it would. Um, let's try to bring up another application here real quick. Uh, we'll see what else we have going on here. Uh, let's just bring up the calendar app. And you can see here at the calendar app, I could just pull it across the screen, just like we normally would over here. This is the 27 inch screen on the left, and a 24 inch screen on the right. And I'm thinking about probably upgrading this, or I may upgrade both screens. I'm not really sure just yet, but uh, it works very well, just like you would expect it would. Uh, you know, everything's there. Uh, let's bring up Finder here. You can see Finder uh, also will slide between the screens. Uh, no problem at all. So, 
and the responsiveness is just as quick as what it would be on any other computer with dual screens. But I wanted to show you, in fact, that the dual screens are working. Now what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to cut over here and I'll just show you a couple settings on the computer. But I'm going to do that with screen capture software and talk to you a little bit about that, of uh, a couple of the settings that you can do to make this um, work even better for you. So hopefully this video is, uh, you know, helping you along here and showing that the MacBook Air with the M1 processor, as you see here, uh, with the dongle, will work to light up dual, dual monitors. Okay, let's go back to the uh, computer. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you here, I am on the computer here, obviously we're doing some screen capture. So the last thing I want to show you is very simply what we can do on the computer to make this experience even better for you. There's a couple of tricks I found and I wanted to share this with you right now. So let me just go ahead and show you this real quick. All right, so the first thing is when you load the Display Link software, you're going to get it in your um, taskbar at the top here of your screen of your Mac. You click the pull down menu, you'll see a bunch of different things we can do in here. Login screen extension status available to download and install. So you can install that. Um, automatically launch after login. This is very important. So you do want to make sure that uh, you're launching the software as soon as the computer logs in. Uh, enable experimental mode. If you have a monitor, will support that, I guess, 3008 by uh, 2560 modes. Man, that's pretty, pretty uh, intense there. Uh, use Apple Watch to unlock your login screen. These are just things that come with this software. Uh, allow flux of warm colors at night. Uh, power save all displays and sleep in clamshell. You don't want that selected because what that means is if you close the, the laptop, like mine is closed now, the, uh, the MacBook Air, then it's obviously going to go to sleep. We don't want that to happen. The one thing I can tell you here, you can see these are two monitors I've hooked up. One is called No Monitor. The other is called the uh, VA 25, 2759 series. What I found here is if you click on this, you can rotate these. And the reason that comes in very important is if you have one of your, one of your monitors in um, a portrait mode, up and down, I found, you want to go in there and actually change those displays so you can have it, you know, straight up and down. Um, you know, I used to use that a lot, especially when I'm, when I'm programming. And if I'm reading an article or something, I find it to be nice in like a notebook format. It looks really nice. But now I'm basically using both my monitor and landscape. All right, so that's everything under the software. All right, I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to close it. The next thing I want to show you is we have to go into system settings here. And if we scroll down here to displays, now under displays, you can see where it says here arrange. This comes in very important, obviously, because you can arrange them whichever way you want it. So that way you can have your mouse going from, mine is going from left to right. You can also have your mouse going from right to left. So that's very important. Uh, so if you find your mouse is not crossing the screens properly, go in here and rearrange your displays. The other thing it'll show, like the no monitors use an extended display. You can also have these. I don't know why you'd want it to. You can actually mirror the display. And what that does, it will show you the same thing on both screens. So I don't know if you'd want that. I wouldn't want that to happen. Uh, everything else in here is pretty much set up normal. You can have different uh, display settings, obviously, for the different monitors. You can do that, and that's totally up to you on that part there. So there's a night shift button here. I've not played with that. There's an advanced button. Uh, allow the pointer and keyboard to move between uh, any nearby Mac or iPad. That's pretty neat. I haven't tried that yet. I might try that and see how it works. Um, automatically reconnect to any nearby Mac or iPad. That's pretty cool stuff there, and all the energy-saving stuff. So... But I did want to show you that, just some quick setups here of what you need to know so you can actually get going with this. So, so folks, I hope this was uh, beneficial for you. And, you know, I've been hearing so much about these M1 MacBooks. Even a buddy of mine bought one. and He called me up and he said, you know what, I can't get dual displays to work. So he was going to send the dongles and stuff back. It does take a little bit of trial and error whenever you're doing something new, especially when you're trying to do something outside of the norm of what the hardware will do. And that's something that you have to work on. You have to have patience for that. But I can tell you the display link, um, uh, the display link docking stations, guys, they're awesome. And they have a new one out now. Mine happens to be a USB 3.0, but they do have a new one out there that is actually USB-C. So you can plug it right into the, uh, the MacBook or the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air. And it's going to work straight out of the box. So 
keep trying, keep plugging along. I hope this video helped you. Uh, if it did, hey, consider subscribing to the videos. I'd appreciate it. And I'm going to be bringing more uh, topics such as this, you know, ways of doing things and different computer type topics too. So uh, hopefully subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate that. Give me a big thumbs up and a big like. And uh, I will talk to you next time. Until then, guys, keep on pushing through and get your computers doing what you want them to do. I'll talk to you next time here on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.